But here's the kicker. For engines that are replaced, GM goes right back to recommending 0W20. Why? Because when the manufacturing is done correctly, they know 0W20 is fine. If they really thought 0W20 was to blame, they'd switch to 0W40 across the board, pay a small fuel economy penalty, and avoid the massive cost of future engine replacements. But they don't. That tells you everything you need to know. This wasn't an oil problem. It was a manufacturing problem. There's also this myth that automakers choose thin oils only to hit fuel economy targets, and that reliability takes a backseat. Let's think that through. Say switching from 0W20 to 0W40 costs 2% in fuel economy. For a truck that gets 20 miles per gallon, that's a drop to 19.6. The penalty from NHTSA, about $60 per vehicle. Meanwhile, replacing an engine costs thousands. If GM thought 0W20 would destroy their new engines, they'd happily take the fuel economy hit and use thicker oil. But they don't, because they're confident the engines will last with the recommended oil. Now, is there any situation where thicker oil makes sense for you as an owner? Sure. Track days, heavy towing, high heat conditions, situations where the engine is working harder and oil temperatures climb. In those cases, a thicker oil can help keep you in the safe zone of the Strybeck curve. But for everyday driving, if your engine was designed for a certain oil, you're usually best sticking with it. What's fascinating is that studies on this subject go in every direction. Some show more wear with thinner oil. Some show no difference. Some even show no real fuel economy gain from going thinner. But look at what automakers themselves have found. Honda, way back in 1999, tested 0W20 oil and saw nowhere issues compared to 5W30 with a small fuel economy bump. In 2011, they looked at even thinner oils and found no significant increase in wear metals like iron or aluminum in the oil, even at reduced viscosities.